Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance, with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Ruron Living, Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country? Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted award-winning coffee at gotyoursixcoffee.com. Welcome to this episode of the Get Up Nation podcast. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Stuart Tomp. Stuart Tomp is a 30-year veteran in the nutritional health industry and is a recognized authority on functional foods and dietary supplements. He served as vice president of North American Urban Spice for 10 years in addition to service as a global leader for Omega 3 market leader Nordic Naturals. Mr. Tom is an expert in hemp-derived CBD and its multiple mechanisms of action to support human health. He serves as a national spokesperson for CV Sciences, makers of Plus CBD Pill. His lectures and presentations can be viewed on YouTube's CV, CV Sciences TV channel. And today he's taking some time to help Get Up Nation understand how anxiety can be managed effectively, especially in the lives of our seniors who may be experiencing increased anxiety and stress due to COVID-19. Stuart, welcome to Get Up Nation. Ben, it's my pleasure to be here. And I just love being a guest on your show. I've never had a bad day in my life because I'm <laughs> Get Up Nation. Yeah, there we go. All right. I love it. Will you share a little bit about what led you to invest your life in the health and wellness industry and why you take such great satisfaction in helping people live healthier lives? Well, like many people that found their way into a health food store, I was looking for natural alternatives. And that was um, a little bit less common in the 1980s. It's now very common now. We know there was a period like in the late 60s and early 70s where it was very common. And so these things sort of go through cycles. And I was struggling with asthma. I had bronchial asthma and I couldn't get off the inhaler. And I used to go to the local health food store and there was a guy behind the counter making wheatgrass juice and vegetable juice. And I don't know what it was. It just looked like magic to me. It looked like magic. Here are all these beautiful colors. And, and I didn't know if he was making it up or not. But he would say to people, you look a little bloated. You need some burdock root. He's <laughs> juicing this. And I ended up working there. I got a job at the health food store in Chicago, Sherwin's Health Food Store, which was one of the first multi-million dollar health food stores. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, my boss at the time went on to become the director of education at Now Foods. Wow. You familiar with them, Ben, the yeah. supplement yeah. company? Yeah. Yeah. So when I go to the trade shows, I see Neil Levin, who was my boss at Sherwin's Health Food Store. When I was 18 with a head full of hair, I'm 52. <laughs> And I get to see Neil. And the reason I share that story is I come from a world where your reputation, the interconnectedness in the community, um, it's inescapable. It's a very small world now that's gotten big. So I went from the health food store to sell oil of oregano. Hmm. Have you ever had Dr. Ingram on your show? I have not. No. Have you ever heard of that stuff? Um, no, I haven't. So it's edible Lysol. Let hmm. me say that again. It's an edible germ killer. Does it sound like that could be popular? Wow, that sounds, that sounds amazing. So it was just an essential oil of oregano, and you put it under your tongue, and it's so hot. I mean, this stuff in a Petri dish, in a Petri dish, it kills everything. Huh. It kills everything. So it was one of the original sort of like old world health food store treatments for colds oh, and okay. flu, right? And at that time, coincidentally enough, SARS had broke out in 2003, and I was a guest host on a regular show called the SARS Outbreak Update. I mean, come on, how crazy is that? And we were on only a few, for a few months because it only lasted for a while, mm -hmm. and we were reporting on all of the SARS things and then looking for natural alternatives mm -hmm. to boost the immune system. And after many years of selling oil of oregano, 
I was then recruited to work at Nordic Naturals. Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken their fish oil? Have you seen them? Yes, I have. Yep. So that was an incredible opportunity. I worked there for eight and a half years. I became their global spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really learned the magic of science. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, people think they know about eating fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they think true. they know about fish oil. You've probably heard it all, right? Yep, yep. And then I went to work for the biggest fish oil company in the world, and they invested serious money in science. Mm. And they sent me to the big science conferences. Mm. And I sat there just in awe, looking at people say this, Ben, we really don't know. Mm. We really don't know. Mm. We need more research. Uh, we need to do more homework. And I loved how it felt, mm. right? I come from the world of health food store, Call 1-800-243-5242. Don't delay. Do it today. <laughs> and then I landed in the front of these real lipidologists, true scientists. And they were like, hey, we don't know. And that's, that, got, that really opened my mind. And I thought, you know, there's a more exciting way to live excited about science. And that's being excited about not knowing. And the ongoing humility of that, of not knowing. So anyway, to speed up the story, I spent many years there, almost a decade. And then I, I had an opportunity to join here at CV Sciences in 2014. If you can imagine, Ben, we were one of the first companies to produce and sell hemp extracts, CBD extracts in 2014. Wow. So now here we are in 2020. Yeah. And I can spend my whole life trying to help ease the suffering of others and help everyone else uh, get up. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I love it. And then with your experience with SARS, so you have keen insight into, you know, what's happening today. You've, uh, you were there during similar experiences. So that's, that's why I'm very excited to have you here today. Just a wealth of knowledge, timely uh, knowledge for our people out here who, who are dealing with a lot of anxiety. Um, yeah, so I would say that's where I like to start because, yeah. you know, I can get really excited about the science and we can get a little way laid down an alley here. Okay. Um, what I want to say before we go too far, though, is one of our medical advisors, actually really our senior medical advisor, Colonel Dr. Michael Lewis. Have we had him on your show ever? Yeah, yeah. He's, yes, I've had him on a couple times. Yep. Okay. So, so he's, a, he's one of our medical advisors and a personal mentor to me. Did you know that he was on the ground when SARS broke out for Thailand? Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. He, he had talked a little bit about that. That's right. Yeah. So he was on the ground when SARS broke out in Thailand and then also for the bird flu. So when all of this happened, you know, um, he's friends with H.R. McMaster. He went to West Point. He's an Army grad, a West Point grad Army Ranger. So if you please go to CV Sciences, you can listen to Colonel Dr. Lewis, his six strategies for dealing with stress. Nice. So I called the Colonel because I didn't know. I'm watching the media and I'm getting freaked out like everyone. I called the Colonel and he says to me, Son, I'm more concerned about people losing their minds because of stress and personal bankruptcies. Hmm. Real quiet. And I'm like, yeah, but doc, you know, I'm reading all these science papers on viruses and everything, but he's actually an infectious disease hunter mm -hmm. and he's an epidemiologist. Right. And I really had an ego moment, but it blew my mind, Ben. I'm here, this is one of my closest friends. Uh who was on the ground when SARS broke out, but because I've been infected from this silly device here, I'm talking to him like I know more than he does. Hmm. No, really, it was embarrassing. And then I stopped myself. I took a deep breath and I said, Colonel, what exactly are you communicating to me? Mm -hmm. He said, Stuart, stress hormones shut down your immune system so that you can run for your life. And I got real quiet and he said, Stuart, when you're sick, Remember last time you had a flu? He goes, you were so exhausted, you couldn't even drag yourself around. Why is that? The immune system allocates energy. Wow. So think about this. Uh, Bruce Lipton, the famous scientist who came up with the term epigenetics. You're nodding your head. You know Bruce's work. And many people don't. But he taught us years ago, if you're in a tent in Africa and you have dysentery and you have just constant diarrhea and you hear a lion rah, right outside your tent, you stop the diary immediately so you can run for your life. Why? Stress hormones shut down the immune system so that you can run for your life. The point that he was making to me is mm -hmm. that while you're so freaked out because we really don't know, you're going to do as much or more damage 
And now we're having this as a big public debate. And as you can see, Ben, and let's not get into it now because we don't want to get ourselves in trouble. We're having a very nuanced, complicated debate about what is it all worth? What can we do? And where do we have any control? Mm -hmm. So I feel better when Colonel Lewis says, stay calm, carry on, eat food that's good for you, take supplements if appropriate. More importantly, only watch Get Up Nation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good advice. <Big> attack. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah um, so yeah, there's the, we're in this new normal. We're, we're dealing with this pandemic. A lot of increased stress and anxiety changed people's lives rapidly within a few months. Here, kids are going to school on, TV, on their computers, if they're going to school at all. Um, you know, people are dealing with a lot and I'm thinking specifically today of our elderly population. They, they probably, you know, in a majority of cases have medical issues that they're managing already. So with this, the threat of, of COVID-19, there's some very real, um, concerns about, um, you know, dealing, being resilient through this time, surviving this pandemic. Um, will you share a little bit, like you were saying, will you go into a little bit more of the physiology of when we have, you know, when we experience this anxiety, how it affects our immune systems and, and, what we can do to keep our seniors strong. Absolutely, and the fight and flight mechanism is hardwired for survival, but that bi-directional flow, that's something that we forget. When I'm completely stressed out, my immune system isn't available. Why? The blood goes from my heart and my head to my hands and my feet so that I can run. And then you have to mobilize all of this glucose. So if you think about that reallocation of energy and how long are we supposed to keep that up? And that's why I keep saying 24 hours a day, fear was never supposed to be like that. So this is where when Hippocrates said food is your medicine, and I come from the world of dietary supplements where people oversold supplements, hmm. right? We're not going to do that here. We're going to oversell food. Hmm. Let's oversell food because no matter how you cut it up, when you analyze, say, the Mediterranean diet, and I know there are debates whether it's vegan or paleo or keto. Let's not even go there, okay, because that's complicated. Mm -hmm. Just a balanced diet. Think about what the monks in Mount Athos are eating and the lifestyle that they're living and what they're eating. Can we learn from something? There's something interesting there. You know, I, the, uh, if you go back all the way into antiquity, the uh, Epicureans, um, their, their uh, training actually turned into those monasteries. And so it was the idea of community and food, but not too much, and fasting at the right time, and not too much indulgence. And all of that stuff is looking really good right now. Mm. So let's never forget, if we're talking about our grandparents, right? I used to go, and my grandmother's no longer with us, and I miss her very, very much. I used to go there and bring her food, right? And used to visit her, and, and, and the biggest most robust meals that we could have that had as much variation as possible that would incorporate like say lightly steamed cruciferous vegetables. Mm -hmm. Every time we're reminded to eat vegetables, here I'll speak for myself, I often forget to eat my vegetables. <laughs> I've been in the vitamin business for 30 years. I'll take pills. I'll take a broccoli extract pill. I'll take a glutathione pill. I will forget to eat my, I see you nodding too, right? <laughs> it's really hard to remember. I, you do, all of us. So that's why I thought, what a nice reminder. It was my grandmother that originally told me to eat my vegetables. And you know what we learned? That stinky sulfur smell, when you make the ca cabbage and the broccoli, yeah. that sulfur smell is what your body uses, that compound. There's something called the master antioxidant pathway. Hmm. And so you eat the funky broccoli that has the sulfur compound that's converted into this thing called glutathione. And a lot of people tried to sell that. I see you nodding your head. Multi-level marketing companies go to health food stores, big bottles of glutathione. First of all, it's not stable. It tastes like the rottenest thing you've ever smelled ever. <laughs> and um, what if you can just get it from food? So if you ate your steamed vegetables, you'd get the actual sulfur compound that goes through the nerve pathway that turns into glutathione, 
which is the body's master antioxidant. So that's the one that your body needs to make to deal with all of this stress. And I'm not just talking about emotional stress. It could be yeah. pathogenic stress, could be viral stress, inflammation sure. of any kind. So that's a great first step with food. And I have to say this, there's a video on our CV Sciences page on the supplements to use for lung health. Okay. And this is the effective video. I had to watch my protege, who's better at this than I will ever be, who's gonna, the best educator I've ever met, Miles Cyril. I had to watch him hold up the cabbage, show the picture of the steaming broccoli, and look into the camera and say, eat your vegetables. <laughs> and I did, and I know better. So I just want to sort of share that human moment with all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if, if you're hearing things from healthcare professionals like, make sure to wash your hands two times and sing happy birthday twice. You know, my first reaction is, don't tell me how to wash my hands. Until I realized when I go in there and do it, that's a long time, isn't it? It is. Yep. Doing it like this and getting it in between. So I think there's something about us slowing down enough to remember our vegetables, yep. to remember grandma was right. You've gotten steamed. Don't overcook them. Mm -hmm. So that's one simple thing. And, and then I have a few others that I like, um, you know, um, that's not even on this list that's really hot right now, like selenium from Brazil nuts. So now we've got steamed cabbage and cauliflower, and we've got selenium from Brazil nuts or salmon. Your body uses selenium when you're under viral attack and it gets depleted. Now the trick is you need the selenium to make the glutathione. Hmm. So you're eating your vegetables, but you're all stressed out. So you're depleted with your selenium, the mineral, so you can't really make the glutathione, which is why you ate the vegetables to put out the attacker. Hmm. So there's a real interesting, now you imagine here's we've got our steamed vegetables, our Brazil nuts and our salmon, I mean, you can live on, I mean, not completely, but that's actually a meal. Now, if you add an apple to that, I ate an apple every day, mm -hmm. and I had really no idea why. It was convenient for me. Did you know apple skins have quercetin in them? I did not. Okay, quercetin, again, you can buy at the health food store. It's a famous antioxidant, and even in early viral research, now, this is only animal research, only animal research. Quercetin from onions and apple skins and other anti fruits and vegetables fits into the um, block on the surface. You've probably heard how the spike protein gets right in there and causes these issues. Quercetin in animal studies appears to jam up the lock. Hmm. It's like taking a little match, getting it sharp, and jamming it in the lock putting it right in there. And then the spike can't get in there. Now that's HIV, Ebola, H1N1, but that's all early animal. So is there some protective thing, if you've ever seen someone that eats a balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables and not too much refined sugar and enough protein, and you look at them and they look so radiant and alive, and you say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I eat right. Every nutritional expert that I know in 30 years of doing this says, if you actually actually ate like that, you probably only need a handful of dietary supplements because there would only be a few things you'd be supplementing because you'd actually be eating. I see. Amazing. You know, as I think, as I think of this and I think of, you know, I, I know we're talking a lot about seniors here today, but we're also talking about the people who serve them. I'm thinking, you know, of nurses, uh, doctors, healthcare workers who are just grinding you know, all day and all night and that balance we're talking about of, of stress and relaxation and, and and you know, eating almost in a tactical sense of, of eating to uh, combat the things that we're facing. And I just think of those long shifts on their feet and how good it would feel for them to know that when they do get a second to eat, that they are doing it in a way that's sensible, that they're, you know, that's good for their mental health. It's to know that, that they're that this physical, uh, that these nutri this nutrition they're putting in their body is making them stronger specifically for the things that they're facing. That's an amazing thing. And that's the magic. And I think the difference between where we were in this conversation maybe 100 years ago versus where we are today is we have more technology and we have more understanding. We can dive deeper into the magic. I heard one the other day 
Um, and, and if you have listeners that are really paying close attention to this, I'm going to give you one of my favorite sources of information. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard yet of This Week in Virology, TWIV? No. Have oh, you heard I of their podcast, TWIV? Okay. Well, they, they, they became an overnight success. It's their 602, 602 episodes, <laughs> This Week in Virology. Huh, look at you know, who's paying attention. <laughs> anyway, I, I listen to This Week in Virology so that I can be very, very clear on like what the science is going on with the virus. Right. And that doesn't change. That doesn't change what you just said. And that's eating tactically. Yeah. And, and so I think that those are two separate things. So the point I was making, 100 years ago, when the, well, almost 100, right? The Spanish influenza, which I think we're not supposed to call it that anymore, but the 1918 one. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that researchers found that there were people in the Rockies at higher altitude that were dying much faster than mm -hmm. people at lower al altitudes? Have you read that yet? No, I haven't. That was an observation that they made. Uh, observation that they made. Hey, did, you, did you catch in the last couple of days that the ventilators may not be working and they're switching to hyperbaric oxygen? Oh, wow. I didn't, no, I hadn't heard that either. Have you noticed that their, their, their lips, it's the pneumonia, and they're, <gasps> they're gasping? It's altitude sickness. Mm. We're putting the ventilator. It's the wrong tool. Mm. So we did not. A hundred years ago, we knew more people were dying in the rock. Rockies than in Kansas, but we didn't understand the altitude and how hyperbaric oxygen creating a chamber to recreate. We didn't have that technology back then. And I just see that as just so incredible. So I want that to be part of this, the magic of not just listening to me or to Ben and our enthusiasm, but to get deep down into it. Because when you unlock nutrition, there's magic. Exercise. You know how hard it is to get people that are scared and older Hey, I'll speak for my own family. Mm -hmm. We're here in California. I come to the office every day. We're an essential business. My wife is at home. She has a little bit of an autoimmune condition. My son's at home. They are not going out enough. They're not walking around the neighborhood. They think they're on shutdown. Mm -hmm. I come home. The energy level is lower and lower and lower and lower. It's like it's in hibernation. And it's not get up nation. It's hibernation. <laughs> <laughs> And I got to watch it with my own eyes. And these are, you know, this is my family. They're conscientious, healthy people, but we're scared. And it reminds me that the stress hormones shut down the immune system so you can run for your life. And if you're not that active, of course you're going into torpor. Hmm. I'll say it again. If you're just sitting around, yeah. biologically, chemically, you're going into torpor. Hmm. And so you might not necessarily see the benefit if you're not feeling great, but with exercise, I'm sure you've seen this at any age, no matter what, just start doing it. Whether you're sitting in your chair, have you seen this one, the mitochondria dump? Have you ever seen this? No. This is for anybody watching that can't move around. I got this from Bill in our accounting department. Just like, I looked at him, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm doing this for 10 minutes a day. I said, what is it? Said, the mitochondria dump. I said, that's great. I've been doing it every morning. I feel great. How often do you move your arms when you're working out like that? Unless you're, right? Right, right. So that was a nice, simple thing. Now, here's the, here's the benefit. We've all heard about how you exercise and you feel better. Okay, why? Right. You know, you, you make a neurotransmitter that's your bliss molecule. Hmm. So imagine you're running across the marathon. And you're just like, ah! You're so high on your own supply. Mm -hmm. So there are things that your audience has probably heard a lot about oxytocin. Mm -hmm. That's the love, yep. right? Uh, uh, vasopressin, which makes you feel like you're not afraid to be close to someone. Growth hormones, anandamide. Anandamide is your body's THC. Hmm. Let me say it again. When you're high on your own supply, anandamide is speaking to the cannabinoid binding one receptor. So you make this neutral neurotransmitter that actually sends a message of bliss to help you deal with stress. Wow. That's incredible. Then you make another one. This one's the workhorse. It's called 2-AG. It has a long name, 2-arachidonal glycerol. Uh, that's a long name, right? 2-AG. And that's the one for plasticity. So imagine when you have to unlearn something and learn something new. That requires synaptic plasticity. So what we're learning is the body makes these compounds that help you adapt to stress, 
recover from stress, and deal with stress. That's the endocannabinoid system. People get confused that I'm saying, take CBD for stress. No, what we're saying is stress hormones shut down the immune system so you can run for your life. You need something between you and that overreaction. That's mm -hmm. where the plus CBD or the hemp extracts seem to play a role. I want them to come after a proper diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Absolutely. Let's start eating some better food. Right. Let's start exercising a little bit because I think you've seen this. A lot of people rush right to the cannabis products. And, and if you use THC instead of CBD, then you may not be getting all of what you want if you're actually initiating more appetite. Now, this is important. Ben, uh, we're a publicly traded company. We don't sell any THC. However, if you're an adult and you're in a state where somebody does and your doctor, if she tells you that's okay for appetite, not eating is like really bad too, right? A lot of older people right. get scared and afraid and they're not willing to eat. So I want to make sure everyone knows that there's kind of this biphasic appetite thing. CBD tells you that you're full and THC tells you it's time to eat. Have you, have you figured that one out? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's, that ties it together. I was looking at some of the research and, and that was one thing I wanted you to, to explain, you know, how, why should seniors avoid skipping meals? And I mean, it's, it's difficult when their taste, taste uh, process is a little bit different than, than younger people and trying to get that, those nutrients in there. And then, uh, yeah, I just really wanted you to touch on that, why we should not skip meals. And, you know, this is, this is part of it. And I can tell you, even with the CBD products, um, we, we record the, um, you know, complaints or adverse events or concerns. And so we track all that for years and years and years. And we've been hearing now since 2014 that even the plus CBD seems to sort of enhance the pleasure of the eating experience, which is distinctly different than the um, food seeking enhancement with THC. Okay. And this is very important. People laugh about that. And they think it's funny, right? Uh, gongs and bongs and cheech and chongs. That's not what we're talking about. Right. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, approved Marinol, Dronabinol, which is THC, in 1985 for um, treatment, for um, anticipatory nausea for chemotherapy and radiation, and it was used off-label for anorexia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of HIV patients were given Marinol to make sure that they would eat so they wouldn't die of wasting away in the ICU. So that endocannabinoid system is very, very important for allocation and regulation of energy. If you go to the CD Sciences YouTube page, my favorite talk called Understanding the Endocannabinoid System, you're going to see the human that first coined the term endocannabinoid system. He explained what it means. And he said, it controls how you eat, sleep, protect, and forget. Amazing. Now, when I first heard that, I was, I, I, was, I was into remembering everything in 2014. I'll just say that. This is a good, healthy transition here. In, tw in, tw in 2014, when I first found this, I thought my goal was to learn and everything and to get all the data in my head all the time, nonstop. Were you thinking along those lines too? Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 So I found out that, that your brain might not be able to handle that. Yeah. Right. Right. So now we know that someone with a really healthy endocannabinoid system means that they can let it go. So the forget part is if you remember every hatchet and where you buried it, that level of stress shuts down the immune system so you can run for your life. It's impossible to grow and protect at exactly the same time. So I found out with myself, since I had the, um, you know, the ability to think about something neurotically, excessively, compulsively, and never put it down, mm -hmm. was a driving force to my success, and it was also a hindrance to my well-being. Uh, so wow. CBD really softened all of that, and I'm not talking about THC. What CBD did for me and for my body was, because it doesn't directly interface with receptors in the brain, it's a supporting actor. Hmm. So it supports a healthier, more appropriate stress response. 
Now, let's be fair. The same system that is homeostatic yep. keeps you in balance. If it gets out of balance, you could be out of balance. So think about this. If you're perfectly healthy, so is your endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. You maintain a stable weight, a stable pallor. You know, you look at people, you don't look so good today. You know, some days they look. So if you're good, you're healthy, you're maintaining a balance, you've got a good endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. If you have a hyperactive endocannabinoid system, have you read those reports of um, that really dangerous compound uh, synthetic? THC or bath salts. Yeah, I've, well, I, yeah, I'm familiar with some of that. I don't know if I've read all the, the papers yeah. about it. But yeah, there's some frightening things. Yeah. Not, not something that I know very well, but just to make a point, yeah. okay, you take that stuff, which is very de deadly and dangerous, it overactivates the cannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. You see my point here? They're yeah. synthetic cannabinoids that overactivate, and you don't get the munchies, you go eat someone's face. Right. I mean, that's right. yeah. a different story, yeah. right? <laughs> Right. Not what we want. It's not a good sign here. Okay. Yeah. If your endocannabinoid system is really low, how many people in your life do you know that have migraines, Ben? Right. Yeah. Oh, I, I can think of five right now. <laughs> My wife is a migraine yeah. Have Have you noticed that people with migraines, whether they take Imitrex or they take supplements, they still seem to be dealing with the migraines. Did you notice that? Yes. Yep. Migraine sufferers are... Have you noticed anyone with irritable bowel or fibromyalgia, how they say that they have those things like their whole life? Yeah. The latest science is saying that some of those treatment resistant conditions are from a low endocannabinoid system, Ben, mm. <gasps> that the migraine is caused by low ECS activity. And if you can raise the endocannabinoid tone, how do we raise it? Dance. Mitochondria dump. Maybe a little hemp CBD, right? <laughs> Turn off the TV. Stress hormone shut. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, exactly. So if yeah. we now have this modulatory target that never existed, they found this thing in 1992. Huh. When I say that to medical doctors, they say, say that again. <laughs> okay, we have this master control system. They discovered in 1992. Yeah, we never even knew about it. Hmm. So your immune system is moving around. It's hmm. mobile. Your central nervous system, well, that's just in place. Yeah. What coordinates that? What co it's the endocannabinoid system. And it's such a rotten name. First of all, it's too long. <laughs> and it has the word cannabinoid in there. So it's our, yeah. right? right? And the story is so good that they accidentally discovered it. Hmm. Here's what it is. They were trying to figure out how this stuff works. Cannabis. Mm -hmm. found a receptor in the brain of a pig. If there's a receptor, your body makes a key. Right. Ah. And they didn't know. They thought THC just kind of was like an anesthesia. And then they figured out, oh, wow. If there's a receptor, then there's a key. The key is that bliss molecule. The anandamide. When you're moving and you feel alive, you're making anandamide which goes into your brain and speaks to the exact same receptor as THC. Wow. Now, wait a minute. This is so cool when people figure this out. So when you're in love, yeah. one of my, it's my favorite part of the, of the talk, when you're in love, truly in love, it's not just, just oxytocin. That's a signaling molecule. It's been around forever. It's not just vasopressin. It's not just growth hormone. It's not just brain-derived nootropic factor. It's anandamide, hmm. bliss. That's the magic of how you feel better. So if you don't move around, if you have too much stress, you don't have enough anandamide, you're gonna be depressed. And so we're not talking about treating a virus. We're talking about a virus that travels like influenza, that there is no innate immunity to, that there's no vaccine for, and that there is no treatment that's a really effective that's known. Okay, then what do you have control over? Stay away from people, wash your hands, unless you have an amazing immune system, use some of these tips, stop stressing, stay calm and carry on. Yeah. That's kind of the message. Right. That's great. That is great. And it's, uh, it's, it's so great, uh, you know, to get, to get this insight into it because it's comforting. A lot, of, a lot of the media is putting out a lot of distressing information, people's anxieties going through the roof, but I'm always happy to, to partner and to listen to and talk with 
you know, people like you who are providing a solution, who are empowering us, who are identifying, well, this is what we can control, this is what we can't, this is what we can do. And uh, leaving the message that, uh, you know, of encouragement and positivity to say, okay, let's be calm, let's face this, and let's uh, continue to thrive. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, Stuart, I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Will you run through these six quick questions with me? Yes, I will. All right. Who are you thankful for today as you look back on your life this far? I think the person I'm the most thankful for at this second when you ask me is my wife. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for today, what are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for her example of unconditional love and the example that unconditional love always means that you never keep a list and that helps remind me to seek to understand rather than to be understood. Mm, love it. How do you fuel the fire within you? I, um, I have a practice among other things, but I make sure to wake up very early every day and to, to meditate and to get centered. And I'm actually very fortunate that I have several other people that practice with me. So I get to, you know, talk to a, like a meditation buddy early, early in the morning, sometimes when it's pitch black. And so I have a practice every morning where I meditate, I listen to certain things, I read certain things, and then I make these phone calls and I won't start my day without it. Anywhere I am, anywhere in the world, whatever the time zone is, I have to put that first so I can keep myself out of the way. I love it. Great to have a strong sangha, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing adversity taught you to value? Um, adversity. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> uh, what are you doing today you may have never thought you could? Well, I'm talking to you and I'm smiling from ear to ear and uh, <laughs> I just thought it was going to be another show and I made a new friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a great time. I made an immediate new friend like that because I'm part of Get Up Nation. That's right. Get Up Nation. <laughs> uh, what will you do? And then what will you do tomorrow that you may have at some point may have never thought you could? Well, only because of your prompting tomorrow, I'm going to make sure to call some of the people that I have not been in touch with since I helped to start this company in 2014 and I went missing. So wow. I'm going to call them and tell them that I love them and that um, I hope that they're okay. I'm not going to say, hey, I'm alive. I'm going to call them and ask them how they're doing. Amazing. That's great. Uh, Stuart, how can people learn more about you and your amazing work? Well, please join us at CV Sciences on YouTube. Um, I'm working with uh, our education in science and medical advisory team to produce original content. So please check us out at CV Sciences on YouTube. You can check us out on Facebook too, but it's really all the science stuff I want you to watch and make sure to stay calm and carry on, and get up every day and say you're thrilled to be alive. 